So, so far, we've got ourselves a Pac-Man character, and when we run the game, he does animate, he opens and closes his mouth. However, at the moment, he can't move. And that's what we're going to do in this third tutorial. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm in the code section here. So at the top left, we have these three tabs, code, costumes, which we've already used, and sounds, which we haven't looked at yet and we'll do later. So make sure you're in the code section. And then I'm just going to move this code over to the left. Don't move it too far, because if you move it into this section here, uh, then it will be deleted. So I'm going to put some code here on the right hand side. Now I'd like the uh, computer to constantly check to see what keys the user is pressing. And you can choose here what keys you use. It could be the arrow keys for moving up, down, left and right. I'm going to use the traditional WASD keys on the left hand side of the keyboard. So the first thing we have to do is head into events and grab the green flag because we want to make sure that from the very start of this game, when the game begins, the user can control the movement of the character. Now, once we have this uh, green flag, the next thing we need to do is go to control and grab a forever loop. And this forever loop will mean that the game is constantly checking to see what key the user is pressing. So it's not just checking it once when the game begins, but it is repeatedly, forever, checking what keys you're pressing, or at least until the game ends. Now we need to check if the user is pressing, say, the W key or the up arrow. We need to check if the user is pressing the left arrow or if they're pressing the right arrow and then of course do something. So the if block in control is what we're going to need to detect whether the user is pressing a key if they're pressing a particular key. To sense or detect which key they're pressing we go to the sensing category on the left and you can see there's this little block here that says key space pressed question mark. And we can pop that inside the if block. So this is now saying uh, if the space key is pressed, then what do I do? Well, we're not using the space key for this. As I say, you can use whichever keys you want. I'm going to um, have the up direction done using the letter W on the keyboard. If you prefer, you can, of course, use the up arrow. So I'm going to go down here to find W. There it is. So now this says, if the W key is pressed, then what do I do? So what do we want Pac-Man to do if we press W? Well, we want him to, first of all, turn in the direction of up and then move forwards. So we're going to do this in the motion section. This is where turning and moving takes place. So let's first of all um, make sure that we're pointing in the right direction. So we're going to grab this point in direction and drop that inside the if block. Now which direction is it that we're going to point in if we're going up? Well think of a compass with naught or zero degrees at the top and then 90 degrees to the right, 180, 270. It's a little bit like that. And here in the point in direction, I have a number. Now I could type in that number, but if I click there, you'll see we get this handy little compass here and the arrow is pointing to the right. Well, that's not correct. We wanna go directly up. So I'm gonna drag that arrow so it's pointing directly up. And you can see that the number at the top is zero. So now Pac-Man will face that direction uh, when we press the W key. Now once he's facing in the right direction, we'll then want to move forwards in that direction. So we'll grab the move 10 steps and put that just after. Now this number 10, of course, will uh, it'll be varied uh, depending on how fast you want your character to move or how slowly you want your character to move. 
and that in turn will also depend on how large or small your characters or sprites are. So don't think it has to be 10 steps. Play around with that number a little bit. Try making that number bigger and smaller and seeing the difference it makes. Now, this whole block is going to go inside the forever block, but I'm not going to do that just yet because, of course, there are three other directions, left, right and down. So what I'm going to do now is to right click on this yellow if block and duplicate it and put it just underneath. So let's look for the second key. We've got up, let's do down. So the down key that I'm going to use is the letter S, or you could of course use the down arrow. So let's find S, there it is. And now which direction do we want to face? Well, I'm going to click on that zero and I can either type in 180 or drag this arrow down. So it's pointing directly down. There we go. So we're going to be pointing in the downwards direction and then moving 10 steps. Okay, so that's now up and down. Let's do left and right. Let me just move this out of the way slightly so I can move this up. There we are. So we'll duplicate that block again, put it underneath and let's do left. So the left key I'm going to use is A going to click in the direction box and drag this up. Now, of course, if you are using a, a compass or a protractor, then this will be 270 degrees. You'll see that scratch is slightly different and it's put this as minus 90 degrees. So right is positive or plus 90 degrees and left is minus or negative 90 degrees. So I'm going to put that in as minus 90. And then finally, let's do right which is going to be the letter D on the keyboard. There we go. And then click in here and just simply change this so we're pointing right. There we go. So these are the four if blocks or what we call selection statements. And these are selecting or allowing the computer to select what to do. So if we press a particular key, then the computer selects the appropriate action. And it's going to constantly do that. It's going to constantly be checking what key we're pressing forever. So all of this goes inside our forever block. So now when we start the game, it will forever be checking if we're pressing one of those four keys. And if we are, it does the appropriate action. Now, there is a problem with this, and you'll see this problem if I run the game. So watch the Pac-Man character here. I'm going to click the green flag. And of course, we have the animation code that we did in lesson two already running. So he's animating his mouth open and closing. And I'm now going to use the keys on the keyboard for moving around. So I press the letter D and you can see he moves to the right. I press the letter A and he moves to the left. And you'll notice that he's pointing in that direction. So he's pointing left and right. That's absolutely great. But what happens if I go up and down? If I go up, and down, you'll see that yes, he's moving in that direction, but of course the Pac-Man character doesn't actually turn to face up and down. The traditional Pac-Man character only looks left and right. Now, of course, in your game, you may want your character to rotate and face in that direction, so he's looking up as he is here. But if you don't want that, how can you change Pac-Man so he only ever faces left and right, even when you're moving up and down? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. Let me move up so he's facing in the wrong direction and then show you this section down here. So all of these numbers here are allowing us to change the position of our character and the size of our character here and the direction. And if I click on this number here, in fact, before I click on it, just watch this number here. You'll see that's a zero because I'm going up. If I press down, you'll see he's now facing 180 degrees. Left, you can see minus 90, right, positive 90. So that is simply telling us the number that we've used in the code here. But if I click on that number, you'll see that not only do we get this compass that allows us to change the direction he's facing in, but we also have these three icons at the bottom. 
Now this first one here with the circle arrow says that whatever position, sorry, whatever direction he is facing, the character, the sprite, will rotate to face that direction, which of course is what's going on now. The second icon there limits him to only turning to face the direction left or right, which is of course what we want for a Pac-Man character. So I'm going to click on that icon there. The third one here means that it won't rotate at all. So if he was facing right now, then he would continue to face right, even if we were to go left. So he'd look like he was facing backwards. So I'm gonna click this middle button here, and you'll see the difference now if I just click on that, and I run the game, you can see he can still look left and right as I move left and right, but if I move up and down, he doesn't rotate uh, around to face that direction. He can move in that direction, but he doesn't face that direction. There we go. So now we've got our Pac-Man character animated and able to move. So the next step we're going to look at in lesson four is creating the background maze for Pac-Man to run around inside.